Hi, this is a game that occurred between myself as white and that of Japan Black. It's a five minute game, by the way, not one minute bullet. Um, so this is a five minute game that occurred just uh, 20 minutes ago. 20, 15 minutes ago, but who cares? Um, I, yeah, I certainly don't see any reason why it should matter. Be better if it was live. Here we go. E4. David's playing E4 again. Huh? Um, and so we go right into the Spanish opening with, which I do quite like for white. I have got um, good results with the, the Spanish, even for black. Um, not for black players playing me, but for me playing black against um, white players playing E4, I've played the Spanish, of course, for black. And my opponent plays exactly one of the moves I really like, is the Cozio defence. Now this is knight g e7, where if white captures the knight on c6, it's not going to be advantageous in uh, messing up black's pawns with d c6, because the knight obviously can just take back. And so my opponent is Japanese, and here is queen e2 so here is the move i like for white uh the the um right appears um queen e2 wall um attack defense uh people like anatoly karpov quite like this move themselves and i got this move out of the um Batsford guide to chess openings Black continues with g6, a a typical um, setup in the Cozio, because they are wanting to place the bishop somewhere. And my opponent is two one hundred and something. Okay, so Black plays sensibly here with um, wanting to develop their bishop, and in this case on g7. And this move, rook d1, is for an obvious intent of primarily d4 um, and opening up things, you know, like opening up, getting an exchange on e5 or threatening things like, um, in normal circumstances, pawn takes and the pawn can't capture back if you set um, microscopically uh, in your mind it's really good for you because the queen will be taken with the rook on d1 so d6 and as promised d4 and here's bishop g4 which is uh, now threatening my um, pawn on d4 because I can't capture because the knight is defended uh, not is not defending the the um, pawn because if it takes I lose my queen I could do that um, I could uh, get two pieces for my queen but it just isn't the greatest idea in the world so bishop e3 so I'm just um, keeping the status quo of defense on my d4 pawn a6 and I have uh, three choices or four choices altogether where to uh, move my bishop or I can take the knight. So I play bishop c4. This reminds me of uh, a move that uh, Grandmaster Gufeld played against me when I was playing him and he was playing a simultaneous display in Christchurch a long long time ago and he played bishop c4 back from a6 uh, buff and then placed it onto bishop d5 which is the same um, same opening I played I played a Cozio for black against Gufeld Grandmaster Gufeld Ed, Edward I think or something like that I think 
please excuse me not knowing his first name, but it's Goofeld I played. Now we have not, um, King H8, H3 asking the question of the bishop, which the bishop captures. So now it's not too bad for um, white, you would say, you know, it's not too bad for white, is it here? Looks quite good. Um, now I get a wee bit embarrassed with the following move f5. My move, just joking. So now I have to watch out for this, which is threatening my queen twice, and after queen e4, d5, and other things. And maybe I should just take with this. But that will probably promote um, that will probably promote knight takes or even maybe rook takes and d5 and etc and then i've got an isolated d pawn haven't i so that's the thing but knight takes here would be quite um sort of painful because i am now having to look after this pawn and I also have to watch out for my queen being attacked. So it's quite embarrassing, I thought, in this five minute game. So I went um, speculatively e5. So this offers up black a pawn. Okay, because I can't take the queen um, as knight takes, uh, if I go Rook takes queen, of course. New variation. Then black captures not the not the rook, but the queen first with check. So this is check, of course. I have to take here, and I lose a a, a rook for a, a knight, and that sort of thing. And I have to watch out now for this without getting into it too much. So that would be no good. So here I play queen e2, which now black does have to do something about the queen. I thought it was a wee bit better than it was. Um, queen e8. And now I went bishop d4, and this offers up some swapping. And obviously my queen is attacked now, so... I don't really want to play queen takes queen, so I go queen c4. Now bishop c3, everything is all, black's just doing the correct thing, uh, liquidating everything, all the pieces, and then they've got a one position if, if they get that far. Queen e5 after the queen c3 capture, which is check. Queen e5, queen b3. Now, black just plays b5 knight f3 and now i can play rook here which i'm just sort of like basic threats eh? just like rook here threat which is quite good even though black would be able to play white so if it was my move okay new variation what can black do after rook e6? Even though it's sort of the position I just made loses a pawn back. As what after rook e6, black now can play this. Otherwise they're going to lose this knight on c6. So they can play knight d4. Or oh, can they? Oh not yes they can. Sort of. Uh, rook f6 as if knight takes d4 then queen d4 the knight uh, rook f6 uh, is quite good for white of course knight takes the only move rook takes rook rook takes rook and then pawn takes knight is a winning position for white but anyway that's just all fantasy line of course because here we've got rook fe8 
Now play whoop, IC1, not D4, not D4. Rookie eight. Now I want you to just do a wee exercise here. After rookie eight, so after I take rookie eight, rookie eight, can I play rook C7 um, at all? Okay, so that's a wee exercise for you. Can I play rook C7? I might lose my queen, my F2 pawn to the queen, but can I play rook E8, rook e8 capture so rook takes rook rook takes rook rook takes pawn on c7 can i play that and the answer is yes and that's what i do do i went rook e8 rook e8 rook c7 so now we have got equal pawns for the moment now i figured out that if white is met with rook e1 check King here that Queen F2 okay is not very good for obvious reasons of check and here we've got a clear one position even if black puts their queen and rook in the fray so anyway and I'll just show you that. Um, I'll just go Queen F4 check happens. So we got Rook C7, Rook E1 check, King H2. So Queen F2 is no good, I figured. And so my opponent went Queen F4. Fair enough. This would normally pick up my Rook, and it's the sort of thing I might even fall for normally. Uh, but I had already seen this possibility, and I knew I could play Queen G3. Now if this pawn's not here, okay so this pawn's here, what would white be met with? What would be a good move for black here? So let's just say we'll, we'll imagine after this black plays this move, new variation, F3, what can um, white be met with now or what can black now play here? That wins reasonably serious material and the answer is rook h1 deflecting the protection of the queen on g3 of the king on h2 so it, it takes away white's um, defense of the queen on g3 which is only a t um, defended here in this fantasy line only um, so after this uh, the computer's already shown it don't want to take that. Don't be a silly computer. Queen g3 is um, tantamount to white resigns. So anyway, that's just a, a fantasy line of course. So we have, no we haven't got this. We've got this and king g3. And now rook e2. And I'd already worked this out. It's very simple to work this out. Rook a7. Now black could play rook e6. But they went rook b2, rook a6. Here it's clearly a draw, but guess what? Being five minutes, I'm on about three minutes fifteen, and my opponent's um, at one minute. So some moves happen, and I'm not going to go over these too much. Uh, now look at this boldness watch king up threatening i don't know i mean it might be good to go in here but it probably isn't but it might be quite good but i don't i go king f4 i snivel out rook g8 and then we got g4 So after rook g7, what happened next? What was black's move after rook g7? What was black's next move? So a wee bit of a riddle. So rook g7, black now plays rook g7 thirds. Rook from the white square onto the black square going towards whites. 
side. So just going one square, what did I play? And what did my opponent play? Uh, rook g7, I went g5, check. And that relinquished the um, defense, in this case, of the black crook on g7. And what did my opponent play? My opponent played nothing. My opponent resigned. So here we got this check. And as you would appreciate, there's only this move. And then I can take here. And black could play this. And then I can play here. Because if black doesn't play this and goes king h4, then we have an elementary checkmate. Okay? Elementary checkmate, dear Watson. Okay, then the other line is similar. H6. And then I can just um, play this. I could lose this. I could just draw this still. Rook here. Forces the only move that's on the board for black is king h4. So we'll just get the computer to play that real quickly. The only move for the best move for the computer to play is king h4. And then rook h6 is checkmate. That is the end of my session. I thank you very, very much for watching and uh, please check out the interview with my friend Sam of Friday's date, the uh, whatever date it was, I think it was the 23rd of August, pardon me, excuse me, and um, that's got a record amount of likes from it and views as well for chess. Not so much for other things I've done on here. Thank you very much. That's all from David Wigner in the deep, 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 deep south of New Zealand.